Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's make a lightning detector in Adobe After Effects. All right, shout out goes to Dodge Bard, who gave me a problem and uh, to solve, and that was he shot 90 minutes of a lightning storm um, and wanted to find the places in those 90 minutes that the lightning flashed. And lightning doesn't flash for very long, a few frames. Uh, he tried to sit and watch it, but if you're sitting and watching a black screen for a long time, uh, you end up getting distracted and then you miss the lightning. So he wanted to find a way where the computer would, would highlight when the lightning flashed. Definitely not something you could do in Premiere Pro. This is a job for After Effects. Well, it's a job for After Effects and a job for someone like Brian Maffett. Uh, stick around at the end, I'll tell you a little bit more about Brian Maffett, but he is one of the pioneers and a guru in working with After Effects. So it's, uh, I think it's kind of funny. Brian is, is cut from the same cloth as me. Uh, when someone asks a question, we just go into motion and we just want to fix the problem or come up with a solution. Uh, we don't have a what's in it for me kind of attitude. We just want to help people. So uh, I'm literally sitting on the couch with my smartphone and I get the, the request from uh, Dodge and I think, well, Brian would probably at least give me some direction. <laughs> I, I sent a, a, a message to Brian. It was probably within an hour. He sent back uh, the solution and an After Effects project. So that's what we're going to look at using After Effects to detect that. Okay. Let me show you the final result and then we'll uh, deconstruct it. So you can see the lightning is a flashing and in the bottom of the After Effects timeline, there's these white markers here and each one is where the lightning flashes. Well, how the heck did he do this? Well, first of all, we're going to use an expression that's built in, you don't have to write this, called sample image. And what sample image does is it samples a point or takes a reading from a point um, within the frame. Now, because the lightning flashes randomly, you can't tell exactly what point where the lightning will flash. So Brian uh, came up with this idea. It's, it's pretty simple, but it's a smart decision to turn the whole screen white when the lightning is flashing and when the lightning is not flashing, it's completely black. Let's do that now. So I'm going to start from scratch here. I'll grab my lightning and create a new comp. And I'll just rename this so it's easier for us. So this is our video revealed lightning. There's the lightning here. I move my effects controls over to the right. Normally they're stuck in behind here. So the first effect to add is the mini max effect. So I'll go over to my effects and there's mini max. And with that selected, I'll double click and you don't see much of a difference. Now let me take this to where I know around seven seconds is where the lightning starts to flash. So by default, Minimax does nothing, but this radius, as you start to turn it up, it starts to um, turn this into a pixelated mess. Basically, this is like super averaging. So instead of thousands of pixels, now we're making up the lightning with 20 or 30 pixels. And if we turn this all the way up to 500, then you see it turns into a giant blob of, uh, of this mess. So it's still not a full screen. So we'll add another effect after this, which is the mosaic. And typically the mosaic, if I turn off min max, you'll see mosaic does a similar thing. Although you'll notice that mosaic doesn't change the brightness at all. Mosaic is usually what you put on a face if you're trying to hide a face or a license plate. Right now it's set 10 pixels to 10 pixels. Well, if we take this to one pixel and one pixel, now we've got a full screen, but it could have gradients in here. It won't be completely pure white or black. So we'll add one more and that is the threshold. 
and just the regular threshold. And we'll change this level to 128. And now it's completely black and white. So you see when the lightning is flashing, it's white. When it's not flashing, it's completely black. So we've created this comp. We're going to put this comp into another comp. And I'll drag this down and put it into a comp here. And we'll search for sample image. And you'll see it's an expression. And again, with that selected, we'll drag that in. Open this up, open up our effects, open up sample image, open up sampled output. And you can see right there, if you carefully drag this down, you'll see that's where the expression was written. And we don't have to change that or even know that that's there. What we do need to do is turn on this show post expression graph. The, the output that you were looking at before is in this area here, which we can also enlarge. Right now it's set to gray. If I click here, you'll see that the cursor is going to begin to flash and it's going to start to find um, our flashing Let me just try to move this back. It's a little unruly while it's it's working on things here. And as Brian said when he first sent this to me, is people have to be very very patient. It's going to take a little while for uh, it to calculate. And for 90 minutes, it was still easier than than um, Dodge watching the whole thing. It would just drive him crazy. He would, he would get distracted and miss it. So you basically set this up and then just walk away and, and let it uh, calculate. I'll speed this up so it goes a little faster. Okay, there we go. So now when we go over top, we can see that's where the lightning flashes and that's where the lightning flashes. But you're probably asking, well, I see white, but I don't see any lightning. So this is just uh, position data or duration of when, when it happened in time. So we'll go back to the lightning and drag the lightning on the top. So now it hides everything below it. And we have our indicator down here. So if I move to this point here, that's where the lightning flashes. If you wanted to, if I double click on this uh, vidrev lighting and we turn off the threshold and go back When it calculates it this time, it will be more of a, uh, a gradient. You'll see it's not just white down here, it's white and a little bit purple. I don't know how useful that is, but it is an option uh, that Brian pointed out. So you can see there, there's some purples and some brighter colors. So that's the, the difference from taking away threshold. Now at this point, you could select the lightning itself at the top, and if you have, um, an extended keyboard, you could add a marker here or just go up here to add a marker. So I could mark each one of these out and then I could delete this completely out of there and have a markered uh, uh, value. All right, so there you go. That's why I went and tapped the amazing brain of Brian Maffitt because he's the guy that thinks of things like this. I think it's it's a uh, it's pretty darn brilliant. Probably other uses for it out there. It has to be fairly contrasty. There has to be, uh, like we see here, a lot of dark and a lot of uh, bits of light. Uh, Brian suggested that maybe you could use this for a meteor shower. Maybe. Sounds pretty cool. So I, I mentioned at the beginning, if, hang around for a second. Let me just tell you, uh, Brian means a lot to me. He's been a longtime friend. He's one of the uh, founders of Total Training back in 1996, before YouTube, before we even had videos on our computer. Watching a video on a computer was not a thing uh, back then. It was brutally hard and tiny little uh, postage stamps if it, if it was a video at all. It was not uh, an easy thing to do, and, and uh, making videos was a, a big problem. So back in that day, I used to uh, buy training from Total Training and they used to have After Effects training and thousands of people learned After, After Effects from Brian Maffitt. And I would basically take um, a computer into the living room because there's only one television in the house back then. And it was a VCR. So you stuck in a VHS cassette um, 
and watched it on there and you would pause the VHS cassette and then you would try the things and rewind and play and learn After Effects that way. And it was very revealing because After Effects to this day continues to be one of the most complicated and difficult to use applications out there. And people like Brian Maffin not only taught us how to use it, but he taught us ways to think differently about how to use science and art together. Because this is a perfect example of science and art together. And the best After Effects users are the people that have half a science brain and half an art brain. And that's Brian Maffin. Currently, he's the technical director at Late Night Cartoons. If you haven't seen our cartoon president, um, you have to watch it. It's hilarious. The animations are done, um, part of the animations are done with character animator. A lot of stuff is done in After Effects and that's why Brian was brought in as an expert there. So watch that. I'll put some links. There's a, a, an old link to an interview that Brian gave. He's a wonderful person, a smart guy, a lover of, of animals, uh, a good friend of mine. And thanks uh, so much, Brian, for uh, listening in the wilderness for the, uh, the helpful calls so that uh, you were able to help uh, Dodge Bart and me and probably many other people. All right, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this useful, please take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal, one-time or monthly donation. There's a link in the description and the front of the page. If you want to be notified of our, our weekly tutorials that come out every Sunday morning, you have to make sure you ring the bell down the bottom and uh, click and uh, be part of that. All right, till next time, it's my job to listen to the calls of, for help out there and either fix these myself or, or bring on amazing people like Brian Matt.